When you work with op amps, operational amplifiers, there's always a kind of issue. Of course, not a serious issue, but anyway, that these op amps sometimes have a double voltage, so a positive and a negative. And in this video, I want to pay some attention to it. Of course, it's important to um, tell much about the subject in a short video, but anyway, I made here a um, op amp audio amplifier for uh, say 20 hertz up to uh, 20 kilohertz with the mother of all op amps, the 741. Uh, for such a tiny op amp, a small signal op amp. Uh, this could be a solution uh, to make a double voltage. Of course, th this must be stabilized in many cases. It must be, be uh, smoothed out properly with a 4700 microfarad capacitor, both voltages, and you can make a voltage uh, supply with a double voltage, a positive, a negative, and a zero in the middle. And then you make this voltage divider and here on the middle of that voltage divider you have a zero. So a positive voltage here, negative voltage here and of course uh, the value of this resistor depends on the op amp that you use, the current that it needs etc. Uh, the good property of such a double voltage supply is that the voltage swing at the output uh, is bigger compared to a situation where we have this. The op amp operates on 12 volt, the negative is on ground and of course the, the output can never go higher than the supply voltage here opposite to ground, zero, and at the same time the minus. So maximum 12 volt but here, with a double voltage, you have a bigger voltage swing, much bigger. And that means a lot of more efficiency, efficiency in many cases. And uh, you see this, for instance, in audio amplifiers. And in audio amplifiers, here you see a block schematic. Of course, that power op amp, op amp uh, must be supplied with a substantial current and a substantial voltage. So, of course, not this circuit. This only applies to op amps that need a tiny supply current. And the good thing of it is that the loudspeaker is often connected to the output of the power op amp and the zero. No uh, capacitor is needed here. Of course, all kinds of problems in this circuit. Um, for instance, the offset current must be aligned so that there is no current flowing here in an audio amplifier, power audio amplifier, when there is no input signal. But anyway, this shows more or less the uh, the basic, the basics, the the, the principles. So. Uh, Let's now go to my circuit, a uh, small audio amplifier, I want to uh, show the schematic, amplifying approximately 80 times. And at first we're gonna switch on the audio generator sine wave to 2, so that means that we now hear 2000 Hertz, 20 Hertz, and everyone acquainted with audio technology can take conclusions out of this, uh, these oscilloscope views, 20 Hertz, sorry it's 200 Hertz, correction, 200 Hertz. 20 Hertz. My loudspeaker box is not able to reproduce 20 Hertz 
but of course on the scope it's very well visible. 20 hertz. 200 hertz. And 2000 hertz. 20 kilohertz. So no audio distortion visible. And let's see how that circuit uh, amplifies audio. Um, and I want to connect it here to this thing. Audio player. And you can set the amplification with the help of this potentiometer of 50k. It has a pleasant sound. And um, well, that was more or less all about the audio demonstration. I want to show again the amplification. And let's go to the to the circuit. Here is the schematic. And um, it's important to tell that we have the voltage divider that was necessary to buy us the 741 is here. RA and RB 150K both connected to the tree of the 741 and here the input capacitor, uh, here the voltage divider at the input to safeguard your uh, smartphone 1K resistor, so the output voltage of your smartphone or AUX is divided by 2 here and here the signal enters the amplifier. This cap and the, this resistor are very important for the amplification. When you forget them it doesn't work and you can set the amplification. And you can use one microfarad capacitor or the 0.47 microfarad capacitor for audio. One microfarad is advised to get to the lowest frequency C's in the audio band. 20 Hz up to 20 kHz. So it shows uh, how to bias a small signal uh, op-amp. There are other possibilities to do that anyway. But um, uh, I have to say that I didn't do so much experiments with op-amps in the past. So um, my knowledge about that uh, part of electronics is a little bit limited. Anyway, of course uh, I'm able to uh, reproduce an op-amp circuit or make an experimental circuit anyway. So here you see the pin connections of the 741. I use the 741C and you can supply the circuit uh, with voltages between 9 and 24 volts. Amplification 15 millivolts in, 4 volts out. So this is quite a good amplifier for audio and the sound is pleasant and as you have noted out of the uh, oscilloscope views the frequency characteristic is um, good only is a, a slight fall of the highest frequencies 20 kilohertz but anyway it has in my opinion a good characteristic so it's useful for audio amplifiers and in stereo applications of course you have to make this circuit twice
op aan biasing. It is a, it's a whole science. And when you want to know more, more go to the internet or buy a good book about op amps. Uh, my knowledge is somewhat limited in this respect anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. Take a closer look. 0.7 capacitor. The voltage divider here consisting of 250k resistors. The 741. The potentiometer that sets the amplification. The 10 microfarad capacitor in combination with this 1k resistor that also sets the amplification. And here the output capacitor, 1 microfarad. And here the voltage divider that uh, divides the input voltage and safeguards your smartphone, aux output, etc. And here is my music source. Best sound. A very cheap thing that I bought a few years ago, but it is extremely useful. And um, well, for, for such a demonstration, it's perfect.